Welcome to Electron Online, and here's another example with a ball hitting the wall. And we're going to look at the momentum and impulse, a little different spin on things here, because here the problem is given in such terms that we have an initial velocity to the left at 10 meters per second, the ball has a mass of 2 kilograms, and has a final velocity to the right at 6 meters per second. The impulse is given graphically to us. The impact lasts for 10 milliseconds, it increases linearly for the first 8 milliseconds, and then decreases for the last two milliseconds. And so the objective here is to figure out what the maximum force is during the impulse, during the actual contact. And so we have to somehow relate uh, the impulse here to the problem over there. Of course, we do have to remember that when we draw up a graph for impulse, when we have on the vertical axis, we have force. On the horizontal axis, we have time. The impulse is equal to the area underneath, area underneath the force versus time graph. So this area underneath here represents the impulse of that impact. Mathematically we can also say that the impulse is equal to the change in the momentum which is equal to the change in mv which is equal to the mass times the change in velocity. And so we're only took, uh, looking at the ball's momentum. We're not looking at the wall and the earth's momentum of course. We want to take a look at the ball's momentum. Uh, we can also, in, uh, also say that the impulse is equal to the product of the force times the time. And of course, in this case, the force is not a constant force. It's a varying force. So we can definitely better represent that by the area underneath this curve. So what we now can say is since we know the change in velocity, we know the initial and the final velocity, so we can find the change in velocity. We know the mass of the ball. We can calculate the impulse using this mathematical equation. We can continue saying that this is equal to m times v final minus v initial. So we do have to take, take care of the signs because with momentum, since it's a vector quantity, signs are definitely important. All right, so let's calculate the momentum, or I should say the impulse, using this first equation. It's equal to the mass times v final minus v initial. Like so, and so that would be 2 kilograms. V final is 6 meters per second to the right, so that's a positive 6 meters per second. And we subtract from that the minus 10 meters per second, minus because it's to the left and that's by convention, so minus 10 meters per second. All right, and so this is equal to 2 kilograms times 6 minus a minus 10, that's a plus 16 meters per second. And so this would be equal to 32 kilograms meters per Per second. And so that's equal to the impulse of that collision or the wall pushing against the ball, making the momentum of the ball change. Now that should equal to the area underneath the curve, and so somehow we have to find the area of this curve. Now, of course, this is a triangle right here. We have the width of the triangle and we have the height of the triangle. We know that the area of a triangle is equal to half the base times the height. So the base times the height times one half gives you the area underneath the triangle, and that should equal the impulse, which should equal the impulse over here. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. So impulse, therefore, is equal to one-half times the base. The base is 10 milliseconds, 10 times 10 to the minus 3 seconds. And the height, well, that would be the maximum force, F max. And that's what we're looking for. All right, if we now set that equal to the impulse that we have over there, we can then say that uh, instead of I, we write 32 kilogram meters per second. That should equal, oop, I don't need a parenthesis here, that should equal one half times this, which would be five times 10 to the minus three seconds, times F max. So finally we can say then that F max would be 32 kilogram meters per second divided by that time, so F max, is equal to 32 kilograms meters per second equals divided by, I'm running out of room here, 5 times 10 to the minus 3 seconds. And let's see, how about that's equal to 5 goes into 32, that's 6.4 times, and then 10 to the minus 3 in the denominator, that would be 10 to the 3 in the numerator, that would be 6,400 newtons. And let's quickly see if that's correct. That's 5, 6.4. Yes, it is. And so that would be the maximum force experienced right here, 6,400 newtons, uh, 8 milliseconds after the ball makes contact with the wall and then it bounces back. And after 10 milliseconds, 
there's no longer any contact and the ball is flying the other direction. So that's how we do that. Nice little interesting spin on momentum and impulse with the ball hitting a wall.